holy Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Oh, holy, oh, holy Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God So holy, holy, holy
come on just go ahead and worship the Lord lift up your hands everyone in this room everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord come on just lift up your voices and bless him bless him from the depths of your heart come on go ahead and pour your love on Jesus just pour your love on Jesus pour your love on Jesus this is yet another time for an encounter in his presence but just in a moment can we just lift up our voices and just bless God in the spirit just bless him in the spirit and bless him in your understanding just go ahead and cry out unto your God your father your maker come on are you talking to the Lord out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living waters come on is someone crying tonight out of my belly shall flow rivers hey, rivers of living waters is someone crying is someone talking to the lord out of my belly shall flow rivers hey, rivers of living waters come on lift up your voice and cry Shila baru teke vere tila tata pauriasa Lante ke pere teke brata tapa Shala bara tapa nama kabriya tata paro teke te Shaka bara taka bara taka pa Shaka pere teke pariya tata pana Come on is someone crying tonight Lift up your voice and bless him From the rising of the sun And to the going now of the same you remain Lord, you remain King. Come on, bless Him. Shila bara teke te, rana kabariya sata bara ta, shaka bara kete kabara ta, raka bananta kabariya te kaba. Come on, bless Him. Come on, bless Him. Is someone hungry tonight? Is someone hungry to be a partaker of the grace? The Bible says God is able to make all grace. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verses 8. God is able to make all grace abound towards you that he having all sufficiency in all things will abound in every good works. Come on, are you praying? Go ahead and say, Lord. Make me a partake of the grace tonight. Make me a partake of the grace tonight. Make me a partake of the grace tonight. Come on, is someone praying? Those in all the other floors, don't be left out. Those in the galleries, don't be left out. La 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 la. La 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 King of glory we bless you we worship your majesty we worship your majesty you are king you are ruler you are the judge of all the earth. You are Alpha. You are Omega. We worship your majesty. We declare of your goodness. We declare of your faithfulness. 
all over the nations of the world let men experience of your power let the nations bow in worship of your majesty we receive of your grace tonight we receive of your power tonight we receive of your presence tonight we receive of your vessel tonight hallelujah i'd like for us to yet pray but the bible says in the book of second corinthians chapter 9 and verses 8 it says god is able to make all grace abound towards you that he having all sufficiency in all things and then you will abound in every good work last week our father told us that god began to impress upon his heart to begin to teach along the lines of the graces that are obtainable upon his life and upon this ministry by the privilege of god's grace and mercy and i'd like for us to know that tonight is another opportunity orchestrated divinely by god prepared for you and i to be partakers of this grace is it the spirit of wisdom is it this grace called favor the power and the grace to master the art of god's presence the manifestation of god's spirit display of power signs and wonders miracles these are the graces that are obtainable in this house and tonight is another opportunity for you to receive two weeks ago we began to talk about the spirit of wisdom as our father will labor and mentor and disciple us and build us the bible speaking in the book of mark chapter 6 when jesus found himself his way to the synagogue and he began to teach and all the doctors of the laws were gathered these were men who were studious with the lord these were men who understood the laws and the prophet they had mastered and crowned the Torah. But when Jesus began to speak, although he read from the book they were exposed to, but the economy from which he tapped his utterance and his wisdom was alien to them. And they said, what wisdom is this? Are you still a spectator in this place or you are crying? to say Lord let this spirit of wisdom fall upon me and if you're here tonight and your experience is emptiness the Bible says God will cause his people to receive favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty Good understanding brings favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. I cannot be connected to this ministry, and all I see around my life is foolish decisions. I cannot be connected to this grace, and all I see in my life is emptiness. I can't be connected to this grace, and I am barren of power and the presence of God. Can we lift up our cry tonight and say, Lord, Tonight is another galore of spiritual experiences. Tonight is another buffet of possibilities that are obtainable in this house. Can you lift up your cry tonight and say, Lord, the grace will not elude me tonight. Lift up your voice and pray. Come on, do I have desperate people in the house? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, tonight's deposit will not elude me. My heart is open. My heart is panting. I cannot come face to face with this grace and be small. This is the grace that makes men. God is not only the maker of the heavens and the earth. God is also a maker of men. Come on, cry. Come on, cry. Come on, cry. Someone's hunger 
is touching the heavens someone's passion is touching the heavens someone's hunger is moving the heart of the father thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting in my hand thank you for lifting it thank you for lifting oh thank you for lifting it oh. hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we glad to be in the Lord's presence tonight? Are you ready to feast of the abundance of the grace that God has for you tonight? If you're glad, come on, don't spare it. Put your hands together for the Lord. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. There is a character of a people that God has invested with love and jealousy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please say hello to your neighbor as you take your seats graciously. Once again, you're welcome to church. This is Koinonia. Praise the Lord. There are things that characterize this house and one of which is the investment of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, among those that God has privileged and invested his love and jealousy, we yet have a very special set of people in our midst that I want to welcome. If this is your first time worshiping in Koinonia in a Sunday evening like this, please can you stand to your feet? Majestically, we have a prayer and a prophecy for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're in the overflow, please get your feet at the basement. We're glad you can make it to church tonight. Our officials are putting the first timers' forms into your hands. We want to prophesy and pray for you because this is a house that when we ask God, He answers. Praise God. When the apostle was taking us through some of their expedition in Acts chapter 3, he said, such as I have, I give unto you. Praise God. We have something in this house, and very confidently, we tell you that you're going to get it tonight in the name of Jesus. Please do well to fill in the form very legibly in your hands. In just a minute, you'll be sitting down. Do well to fill in the form legibly in your hands. There are two parts, it's detachable. The one at the bottom, you give it to the officials when you're done, they will wave to signal your attention for that. And the upper part is for you, for more information if you want to have. And for those of you worshiping with us also on our online media platforms, we also welcome you. Thank you for joining us for the service tonight. Please, saints of God, stretch your hands towards these precious saints and let's pray for them. Passionately from the depths of your heart, in the name of Jesus, you are blessed because you have come to mount zion your life will never remain the same in the name of jesus everything that you came with that doesn't represent the glory of god this is mount zion there are angels distributing graces you would never go back the same in the name of jesus not just you but your families will testify that of indeed you came to the presence of the lord bless them in the name of jesus and as you leave we pray that the presence of the Lord will live with you in the name of Jesus. That everything that never answered to you before, from the service tonight, that it will begin to respond to you favorably in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much again for coming to church. Please graciously take your seat. Precious saints, let's celebrate them. Thank you. Please enjoy the rest of the service. God bless you. Praise the Lord. If you are celebrating the Lord, you can do better than that. Can we celebrate Jesus tonight? 
We have tons of testimonies today coming in from last week's message, The Grace Called Favor. We can't even take everything, but I'd like us to just give thanks to God for divine intervention, miracles of healings, supernatural jobs, deliverance from death, from accidents, mighty things God has been doing, supernatural deliverance from diabolical powers. Can we just shout and celebrate the Lord tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like us to invite the following persons. We'll be reading most of them. We'll just call two people to come upstage. Um, Omeje Onye Kachuku and Mampak Nanre. Can we celebrate them as they walk up stage? Omeje Onye Kachuku and Mampak Nanre. Mampak Nanre and Omeje Onye Kachuku. I'll be reading the rest. We have several of them, like I said. We'll just take a few. We can't take everything because of our time. I'll be starting with that of Ose Adia. Ose Adia. On Thursday, two weeks ago, I got a call from my friend informing me of a job opening. After going through the job description, I became scared knowing that I could barely qualify for the job. However, after the koinonia service on Sunday, an apostle taught on the grace called favor, my faith was boosted and I started praying for favor in getting that job. To the glory of God, I attended the interview last week Thursday. That's the same week that just passed. And divine favor came through for me. I got the job with an oil and gas company. Can we join this in this powerful celebration? Hallelujah. I want to assure you that grace is still working. The Bible says Jesus increased in favor with God and with men. The increased dimension of that grace called favor will work for you in the name of Jesus. The next is that of Daniel. Daniel from the United Kingdom says, I want to thank Almighty God for the great and mighty things he did for my family. I started following Koinonia through my wife. She always listens to apostles' messages. At first, I wasn't serious about it because I was very skeptical about ministers of God. But ever since my wife introduced apostles' messages to me and I began to listen, I started experiencing changes. I've been looking for my immigration papers for 10 years now. I prayed, fasted, and did everything, but still nothing worked. And I'd seen so much delays around my life. Then during the July miracle service, of course they were streaming online, Apostle taught about joy and the benefit of joy and praise. I was really fed up with my experiences, but I decided to still praise God with dancing. So I started praising, worshiping, and dancing before the Lord from the 2nd of August. I did it for four days running. On the fifth day, I was called and congratulated that my papers have been found and had been granted access. Can we join to celebrate Daniel tonight? Don't forget the axe head fell into water and by God's anointing, it floated. Whatever it is that is missing in your life, by God's anointing upon the apostle over this ministry, they shall be found in the name of Jesus. The next is that of Susan Osomo Begbe. I had, she says, I had two babies back to back via the cesarean section five years ago. I had suffered lower abdominal pains intermittently along the lines of the stitch. These affected my ability to stand and pray for prolonged periods. At the last miracle service in July, which, is also my which was also my birth month, Apostle mentioned my case while I sat in the overflow outside. From that day to date, I have been healed and made whole. All the pains are gone. Can we join Susan to celebrate the Lord tonight? 
If you came here with any pains in your back or in any portion of your body, they would disappear tonight in the name of Jesus. The next is that of praise. Okote. After Sunday service, I was so expectant and believed I had contacted favor. So on Monday, that was the day after, I went to submit my CV in an office where I presumed will have vacancies. Now note the, the, the words. There was no advertisement. There was no invitation. Just made this faith move to go submit the CV at the office. I wore a very long casual gown and slippers because I didn't expect anything to happen since I was just going to drop my CV. Lo and behold, I was received and interviewed immediately with the gown and the slippers and offered a job and was told to resume the following day. <laughs> you are next in line for your miracle job in the name of Jesus. Needless to say that I had been on a search for a job for a long while, for a while where all I got were promises to be called for a job but nothing came forth from there. Also, a friend called me during this same week, asked for my account details, and paid in a huge amount into my account. That's this same grace called favor still working. Guess what? That's not all. I was also offered another job. Few days after I resumed for the initial job, God indeed is faithful. Can we join him to celebrate the Lord tonight? You are next in line for multiple miracle jobs in the name of Jesus. Ozoani Chidubem. During the last Sunday service, the minister leading offering said we should give like we have never done before. The Spirit of God led me to give an amount I don't usually give. In fact, I have never given that as an offering. And though I was low on finance I, and worried about how I will survive the following week, I obeyed the Spirit of the Lord and felt very happy to do so. On Monday, that was the day after, my team at work met with our manager and he informed us that our sales commission has increased and the increase backdated to July. And the commission we were expecting for August, which was not over, both July and August were to be paid on Wednesday. They paid this commission on Wednesday, and she has come to return all glory to God. Can we celebrate God for this testimony? An act of faith and a supernatural provision. You are next in line for miracle monies in the name of Jesus. The next is that of Richard Ethion. At midnight on Wednesday, I was listening to Apostle's message on the mystery of prayer. And I followed his instructions, the ones he gave in the message, and I prayed. As I was praying, I connected my faith to the Apostle and to the Word. The morning after the prayers, I noticed that the waist pain I had been suffering for over two years as a result of pile was totally gone and I was healed. Can we rejoice with Richard tonight? Prior to now, I couldn't walk for long hours or raise heavy objects without feeling pain. But now all the pains are gone. Can we rejoice with Richard tonight? The next is that of Cynthia. I want to return all the glory to God for his faithfulness towards me. After my youth service, I got an opportunity to volunteer at the radio station while still trusting God for a job of my own. During that time, I started having persistent stomach aches and scan revealed that it was due to fibroid. I was devastated but kept praying to God for perfect health. During the July miracle service, I connected online. And I heard Apostle taught, uh, teach about joy. He quoted John 16, 24. Either to have ye asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I held on to that word 
as I sent in my prayer requests for a job and for healing. I want to give all the glory to God because last week I got a job with a top tier bank in Nigeria and part of the requirements was to go for a medical checkup which they fully paid for. I went for the medical checkup and they discovered that I, had, I was in perfect health, the pains were gone, the symptoms had disappeared. He has returned to give glory to God. Can we join her and celebrate the Lord tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. The next is that of Bernice. God really has a covenant with Koinonia Global Family. In the month of July, I and my cousin sowed a seed into the ministry, believing God for a miracle job for my twin sister, who had completed university education four years ago, but had no employment. After last week's service, when Apostle taught us on praying favor-provoking prayers, I fasted, prayed, and believed God to make a way. To the glory of God, my sister got a job with an oil company this same last week. This same last week. If you are yet to get your own job, this is your week in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Last but not the least, Uche Sophie. I want to appreciate the name of the Lord. On the 2nd of April, I connected to the service online. An apostle declared miracle jobs within three months. I received it for my brother and wrote it down. And I wrote it down and sent a text message to him telling him the exact words from apostle. God confirmed his word and my brother got a miracle job with a multinational company exactly three months after that word. And the job came with an official car and other benefits. Can we join you church to celebrate the Lord? An official car and other benefits and a good job. You are next in line for your own testimony in the name of Jesus. I'd like us to just listen to the following testimonies. Please, I would like to. Go ahead, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. My name is Nan Raymond Park. By privilege, I work in the hospital. I'm saying this so that you understand when I give my testimony. I was being managed for hypertension the past three years. And uh, one year ago, I started feeling severe chest pain along my left-hand side. And I was scared. Maybe there is a complication in my heart already because I'm being managed for high blood pressure. Two months ago, I was listening to the apostle's message and the Lord instructed me to allow his message run in my house for 24 hours, especially in my room. Whether I'm sleeping or I'm not sleeping, no. So I bought data and I allowed the message to keep running. So this fateful day, I went to, to urinate, I came back, and then he was saying that, wherever you have pain, put your hand there and the Lord will heal you. So I put my right hand on my chest. Behold, I had like an ice block poured into my chest. And since that day, I have not had any pain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have a second testimony. That one is even more powerful. The Lord is great. The second one is that I had issue with my, my child. My daughter had a mental breakdown. When I said a mental breakdown, I mean total. That was not the child I gave birth to. And I saw something else live and manipulate through her. So I, I wanted to come to Quenonia. I've been following online. So two Saturday, Sundays ago, I came. I couldn't see the man. So he was preaching on wisdom. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. How to go about this matter? And then after his words, a voice said, you know what the woman with the issue of the blood did? That is what you must do today. So when we finish, I pushed the crowd. I came up. I said, I have to see him. By the time I got here, he has gone. I said, God, something else will happen. Last week, I came back because I can't sleep with my daughter. When I saw the man of God, he held my daughter 
The man of God held my daughter. Apostle Solomon just held my daughter and prayed a simple prayer. And since last week, since last Sunday, my daughter is completely sane. Can we join her to celebrate God for deliverance from mental breakdown and healing on her chest? Can we shout hallelujah? Congratulations, ma'am. Koinonia, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord for what he has done for me because it's only by his grace that I'm here today. I'm not just here with a testimony or with proof in my hand that God is supreme. At the end of my testimony, when I open my hand, you will see what God did for me. On the 2nd of March, my father celebrated his birthday and on the 8th of March, he died. He was buried on the 12th of April. And on the 7th of May, I celebrated my birthday. And on the 12th of May, I was under severe attack. I had this severe chest pain, this migraine. What am I saying? No migraine. The junior brother to madness. I... I had the stomach upset, and after two days, I was coughing like I had never coughed before. When I coughed, I dropped to the ground instantly. And after three days after that, three days after that, sorry, I couldn't urinate. And the devil is such a big goat. He made it possible that I was so dehydrated that I kept on drinking water. And when my stomach was so full that I couldn't take water, I started feeling pains on my bladder. I was admitted in the hospital. Before going there, there were a lot of theories that I had mental issues, I had prostrate at my age. <laughs> After this, at the hospital, I was there for two days and they carried out all sorts of tests from my head to my toe. ECG, whatever you call it. And they told me after two days that there's nothing medically wrong with me. <laughs> At the next night, I told the doctor that I didn't want to be here again because I'm spending money and he told me there's nothing wrong with me. I came and I left the hospital. That night in the house, I was normally when I cough, I cough out nothing. But that night, I coughed out a lump of blood, a dry lump of blood, and I knew that my end was near. So I told my sister, I called my sister in the UK and she told me, and I told her that if I was going to die, I would go to Lagos for my mother to see me before I die. That was on a Thursday. And she told me that, that she knows this man of God while in Zaria, that I should wait till Sunday and come here on Sunday. When she told me this, I refused. I was like, what makes you think that I'll live till Sunday? I'm going to see my mother before I die. You're telling me that I should wait till Sunday. She had to persuade my cousin to force me here. I came here around, say, 5 o'clock, and everywhere was filled up. And I was like, is it God that will meet me outside? I sat down there. The whole Nigeria was praying for me except me. I just sat down, and, I, and when the prayer started, I saw this beautiful man preach about God. He preached about signs and wonders and the love of God. That day, God met me while he was singing. I felt this pain. I felt, the my I felt something move from my stomach, from my chest to my stomach. And I was in, in that instant, I, my, st my stomach started rumbling. I had to go to the toilet. And I don't, I'm not used to going to the toilet in public places. So I rushed home. Before the vehicle could stop, I just ran out of the car and straight to the toilet. I sat down and what was rumbling in my stomach stopped rumbling. And it was like I, was, I forced out something out of me and I forced it out. I was forcing something out like a woman in labor. And when something came out, it came out with a full force and 
Boom! I got up with shock and I saw blood everywhere. And something from my stomach, something came out. I picked it up and put it in running water. Brethren in the Lord, this came out of me. A stone carved in the letter S came out of me that day. God is supreme in his own time. What God did for me, you can never, can never, it's so overwhelming. Bless the name of the Lord. Can we lift up our voices and give glory to Almighty God for his wonders? Is the one that does wonders without numbers. The miracle worker, the great deliverer, the great physician. The Bible says, our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. Can we return all glory to God? Celebrate the Lord. Give him all the praise. Magnify the Lord this night. Can we shout and celebrate hallelujah? Thank you, Lord. Can someone celebrate Jesus? Are you blessed by those powerful testimonies? Are the best you can do? Are you still sitting to celebrate the King of Kings, the doer of all the testimony you have heard, you have seen? You feel like shouting, why not shout to celebrate him and say, Lord, we give you glory. Shout and celebrate him. He's the doer of all. Lord, we thank you. Please take your seat. Praise God. Have you been blessed by those powerful testimony? Just in one minute, can you just bow your head and say, Lord, thank you. We are grateful. We are not ashamed to let the world know that you are the doer. Receive all the glory, receive all the honor. Nicodemus said to Jesus, for no man can do this. There are things that men can do, except the Lord be with him. Please bless him. Thank him. Lord, we are grateful. We thank you for the things you have done, the battle you have won, for the testimony. We give you praise. Please bless him. Thank him. Lord, thank you. Don't make any request here. Just bless him. Father, we thank you for my life, for the testimony, for my family. I return all the glory, all the honor to you. In one minute, can you say, Lord, I'm here tonight. Do not pass me by, O oh God. Send your word to me tonight. Light my life, light my destiny tonight. Lord, put your word in the mouth of your servant for me. Change my destiny. Change my story. Turn my captivity around, O oh God, tonight. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. Praise God. One more time, can you celebrate Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. It is offering time. Proverbs 9 verse 3 said, Honor the Lord with your substance. Please, I'd like you to package your offering, your kingdom investment, your vow, you know, your covenant with God, your prophetic seed. Please, I'd like you to package them. Make sure they are well packaged. All titles, please walk to the front. All overflow, make your way to your screen. Titles. If you are following us online, you are not exempted. Please package your title. You are doing a transfer. If it's not Eternity Network International, you may do well to cancel the transfer. All checks should be addressed to Eternity Network International. You may do well to sign properly behind the check and put down your phone number should in case so that the finance department can reach you. I know there is someone here said, I came with my seed for our father. I came with a prophetic seed, but I don't know how to get the seed across to him. Don't worry. Make sure they are well packaged and well labeled. The finance departments know how to get it across while the blessing comes to you. Please, I'd like you to lift up your tithe, lift up your offering, and speak to God. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. That it taught us powerfully last week about honor. Praise God. The Bible says, good understanding, give it favor. The way of the transgression is hard. Who is that? A man who violates the law, the principle of the kingdom. A, a, someone who preferred to, to, to eat with his tithe. Someone who prefers to buy clothes with his tithe. You know, the ways of that person will be hard. But you say, bring all the tithe into my storehouse that they may be meet. Prove me now, say the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven 
and pour you a blessing. Please just go ahead and talk to God. Give expect revelation. Give expect favor. Give expect good head. Give expect the spirit of understanding. Give expect promotion. Give expect the angelic encounter. Don't just expect money. Expect divine visitation. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We ask you, Lord, tonight that you accept our seed, our offering. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Please cast your seed, your offering with joy and gladness of heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Koinonia, one more time, can we celebrate Jesus for those testimonies we heard? Powerful testimonies of the Lord's power and of the Lord's goodness. What a wonderful experience to sit in such a rich atmosphere of the Lord's presence. The Bible says that in His presence is fullness of joy. And at His right hand, there are pleasures evermore. And as we worship, we create that atmosphere for His presence yet again. And tonight, Koinonia, we have one of God's mighty vessels, a dear woman of God. Um, <laughs> she's released many songs, but I just want to point out one that has been a blessing to me personally and to the body of Christ and to the earth. A song, Alagbara. <laughs> I mean, um, I believe that your prayer life is grateful for that song. Hallelujah. She's an award-winning singer and a blessing to the body of Christ and to generations and generations. Can we give a warm welcome, a resounding applause as we receive of the ministry of Onos Ario? Come on, clap your hands and give God glory. Konyona, it's okay to shout. Oh, somebody celebrate Jesus in the house. Some of them celebrate your God. If you're expecting tonight, I want you to lift up your brains like you know God is about to blow your mind. God is about to shift your life. Oh. Uh, hallelujah. Before I, before I do anything tonight, I wanted to help me celebrate God's servant, the angel of others' house. Apostle, thank you for this opportunity. Come on, you can do better than that, Cornelia. It's okay to shout if you can. It's okay to scream if you can. For there is no high calling, no greater honor than to bow and you before you. Shut up. Not I'm a best. Are you good? Let's sing it to him. There is no we say for there is no. Oh, lift your hands all over oh, this place. Oh, the glory of God is here. Our Savior is here. Our Father is here. Our Deliverer is here. Our Provider is here. Our Sustainer is here. Oh, yeah. Oh, somebody lift your voice. Hey. Oh. 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 There is no, there is no, we say, there is no, It's all get about tonight. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, la na na shayaka. Boys! 
lift up my say, oh God say. He can hear you tonight. He can hear you tonight. He can hear you tonight. Don't stop your worship. I'm on a horse. He can hear you tonight. Oh, come on, Kanona, you can do better than that. Oh God, oh God. Ah, in five seconds, I wanted to give him your worship. If you can pray in tongues, this is your moment. If you believe, help us will locate you. I wanted to celebrate God in the room. Tonight we want to decree that the chains are broken in the name of Jesus. For there is power in your name, there is healing in your name. There's a deliverance in your name. There's a salvation in your name. There is healing in your name. There is breakthrough when we call you in the name of Jesus. Oh, we say there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, let's raise it tonight. There is power. There is power. It's in the name. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, break every chain. Break every chain. Break. Now put your fist in the air. That's what you carry. There is an army. I need to see those hands in the air. Let's 
Saints tonight, his name is Alabara. You're the mighty God, and you like to be just. You are the glorious God. Somebody call him. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Hey. Alabara, the fourth man in the morning for this. He is healing you right now. Oh. The bread of life is from you. Oh. Oh. The bread of life is you. You see, tonight we decree that every mountain bow before him. Hey, the mountains are bowing tonight. We say, all the angels worship. Many times when I'm left for words, I say, Great and mighty. 
So pull here with me. Hey! Somebody jump at the wrong thing. And you're not talking to me. You are the glory of God. You are so merciful. Jesus, you are saying, Jesus, you are. Oh, you're the Savior of the world. Many times when I'm lost, when I say, Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. my Lord, we honor you. Everybody. tonight. to rejoice. He will give you reason to rejoice. I am us. Oh. Hey. We'll give you all. We give you all. Hey. All the glory. And celebrate to your God if indeed you know He is worthy. Hey! Somebody praise us.
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for minister on us. Let's bless the Lord in one minute for this vessel. Just speak a word of blessing from where you are standing. Ask the Lord to increase her, increase her family, increase her ministry. We bless you with the blessings of this house. You go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and good evening, everybody. It's good to be back home and I trust that the Lord will do us good tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. While standing, I'm just going to pray for two groups of people and then we'll sit down. I believe with all my heart that there are people here who are coming to the end of certain seasons. There are prophetic seasons that I started having this impression in my spirit from last week. You see, you have to discern when seasons come to an end and when other seasons start. The Bible says, talking about the sons of Issachar, he said they had understanding of the times. And so I just want to pray because, uh, keep standing please. There are four things that happen in the life of any man that begin to indicate that certain seasons are coming to an end and then that others are beginning. Number one, there will be an unusual urge to pray. An unusual grace for prayer. It's good to always be prayerful, but when you are stepping into very defining moments, there is an unusual urge to pray. You'll just find out that you almost don't want to be in the midst of people. You want to be alone. This is a very ancient principle I have been teaching for a long time. Just help those under the anointing. An unusual urge to pray. Number two, there will be an unusual urge to give. At that point, when seasons are about to change in your life, you can give almost anything, anything at all. An unusual urge to give. Nothing seems to make sense to you again. Number three, there will be an unusual, sometimes inexplainable attack from the kingdom of darkness. It's like a season where everything just begins to fight you. Pay attention. Everything just begins to fight you. Your job, your spouse, your family. For no known reason. The agitations from hell. Because you see, Satan is not... Satan is not omniscient he does not know all things so he uses angelic activities to suspect why are angels suddenly moving around a family he knows that angelic activities only happen at the instance of the word he does not need to know the details the moment he sees angels ascending and descending he knows that the word of God has been sent towards that life and so he will come to find out what is going on hallelujah this is very important and the final sign is that God orchestrates a prophetic encounter for you because you see prophecy is very powerful it can announce seasons it can bring seasons to end hallelujah let me repeat myself an unusual urge to pray an unusual urge to give demonic attacks suddenly around your life and then an encounter with the prophetic these are biblical signs there are some of you I just described you by this exhortation. Therefore, I decree and declare, anyone here who has come to the end of a season, 
I call upon my God, the God of my covenant. I push you to a new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please help those under the anointing. I push you to a new season. New financial seasons. New spiritual seasons. There are some of you in ministry. There are certain graces you did not carry before. But God is about to be announcing you in new ways. Greater mantles. Greater patakatosh. New anointings by the Kaposh Kata by the Spirit of God. I stand by this road and I shift you. Step into new seasons, step into new dimensions, step into new seasons. Climb that ladder in destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Step into new seasons in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, this is the season you will encounter the mantle of your destiny. Until now, you are Elisha, but you have been a farmer. Whereas in destiny, you are a prophet. I relocate you by the mantle of your destiny. Anywhere you are operating now that is not consistent, inside, outside, I stretch my hands. I call upon the God of my covenant. Step into those mantles. Find the mantle for your destiny. Find the mantle for your destiny. Please make sure you are praying. Don't waste your time. You came here for an encounter. I know what I'm saying. I know what I sense from my spirit. I tell you there are people here. Where you are is not the mantle of your destiny has been searching for you. You are a prophet. What are you doing in the farm? You are a kingdom financier. What are you doing around? I stand again by the God of my covenant and I declare be relocated to the place of destiny and anyone deceiving you and wasting your time and wasting your destiny I clear them out of your life Esther was ordained to be queen but she was in Shushan Ruth was ordained to be part of the lineage of Jesus but she was somewhere experiencing a cause Peter was a fisherman whereas his destiny was an apostle pray in one minute align me oh God to the place of my relevance the place of my destiny i'm tired of escorting others i'm tired of wondering what to do with my life your assignment is as important listen to me your assignment if you do not locate the place of destiny you will keep escorting others you will get angry you will get offended your breakthrough your your celebration your relevance is in that place of your assignment pray father tonight it says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me it has been written of you Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. 
Emmanuel, when you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face, Emmanuel, when you come again. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. O Esther, your season has come. O Ruth, your season has come. O Peter, your season has come. Oh John, your season has come. Elijah, your season has come. Oh, my season has come. Oh, my season has come. Oh, oh, oh. Your season has come. Oh, your season has come. Oh, your season has come. Oh, I'm seeing a grace for prophetic psalmistry. There are many of you, you have been called into is a dimension of the prophetic psalmistry. Songs you did not write coming from heaven. I stretch my hands. Lord, where are they? Inside and outside. Songs that become ladders for the end time. Ladders into the throne room. Ladders for encounters. I declare may that grace, may that man to rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, psalmistry by the Spirit, the Davidic order of worship. Take that grace now, in the name of Jesus Christ. You're not wasting your time. You came to church. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Undivided spiritual attention. This is for kingdom come. This is for my destiny. This is for all connected to this grace. Kela baka reka toshko to prande kete leketa, shkebe reka te baka ta prosko to koto baka te leketa, shime kete leka shko to prando koto badiata. Number two, I want to pray. There are spirits that stand at the gates of new seasons and don't allow people cross. I tell you this, there are spirits that stand at the corridors of your next season financial seasons spiritual seasons kairos moments it takes the power of the holy spirit to uproot these devils out of your way it says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways
through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves i decree and declare every covenant and any ordinance of darkness stopping men from stepping into their seasons i come by fire and in the name of jesus christ i declare those altars are destroyed now destroyed now destroyed now destroyed now destroyed now help them please every spiritual pattern that wants you to repeat what you happened to your father repeat what happened to your mother tying you to the experiences of your territory i come by the road of the higher priesthood i decree and declare be delivered now be delivered now be liberated now my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn i am anointed with fresh oil the mighty power of god new seasons new seasons new seasons hear what the spirit of the lord is saying remember not the former things neither consider the things of old remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old for behold i do a new thing behold I do a new thing this is a prophetic word for someone this is a prophetic word for a family you came to church to hear this word the Lord is saying remember not the former things stop giving explanations forget the former things that that which is coming will be a worthy compensation that which is coming will be a worthy compensation stop regretting yesterday there are greater plans in your tomorrow plans that out Weigh that which you have seen. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, the Bible says, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Just allow yourself in a minute or two to just soak in this glory. Sometimes we are too distracted and when God shows up like this, we waste those opportunities. Do not make the mistake of Jacob. In the glory I will stand. I will stand and lift my hand. It's in your glory I'll receive every miracle you have for me. It's in your glory we will stand, we will stand and lift our hands. Ah in the glory we'll receive 
every miracle you have for us. Lord, we believe you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this hour of visitation. You have come, like you always do, to change us, to lift us, to impart upon us unusual graces. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. You are even offended, but one thing is needful. That Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. We trust you, we love you, we honor you, we believe in you. This is why we are here. Every miracle you have for us. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head but thou O oh lord art shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art shield for me, the glory and the lifter of my head. Father, forever we declare that you remain mighty in our midst. This house will remain a conducive atmosphere for your presence, for your power. We decree and declare that we will continue to love you, continue to serve you, to stand in partnership with your spirit as you build, as you make, as you restore, as you transform, as you empower. Indeed, we are changed. We are changed. <laughs> we are changed. We are changed. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, your mighty in battle. We call you this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. The power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Tonight, move upon us. Move upon us. Oh, we say amen, amen, amen. Let it be so. Let it be done in this earth as it was and as it is in the heavens. Amen to my lifting. Amen to my restoration. 
Amen to my rising. Amen to the multiplication of grace. As a family, we declare, Amen. Amen. We are believers of your word. Let it be, O God. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. You see, beloved people of God, one of the things that you are learning every time you come, you are learning the ways of the Spirit. We are a people who love God. We are a people who are excellent and organized. But you must realize that the secret to what you have seen and you experience every time is our flexibility when the holy spirit comes he does not come here as a tenant he comes here as the lord of sabaoth the lord of hosts we are only active participants we follow as he leads for if he does not lead we have nothing to do moses said do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us you can fake power but you cannot fake presence. No. A native doctor can give you power, but he cannot give you presence. That presence factor is the distinguishing factor. Moses said, how shall they know that we're people separate? And he said, I will go with you. My presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. I will bring you into your Sabbath. I will give you rest. Glorify your son tonight, O God. Glorify the saints that will bring you glory through our lives. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. It is important to seek the Lord. Every time we set ourselves to seek the Lord, to know Him more, to fellowship, to grow, to encounter Him, you must realize that we are not wasting our time at all. It pays not only to serve Jesus, but it pays to know Him and it pays to seek Him. Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. Second Chronicles, please. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Let's start our reading from verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 12. Can we read it together in concert? We're reading 12 and we're reading 13. Ready? One to read. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul next verse that whosoever would not seek the lord god of israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman the result next verse and they swear unto the lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets uh-huh It says, for they have sworn with their heart. We're still reading. And sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. They entered a covenant that as for me and my house, I will not only serve the Lord, I will seek the Lord. And the Bible says they were found of him. And the Lord gave them rest round about the lord gave them rest round about genesis chapter 24 and verse 1 the lord can give rest round about it may not look like it but i tell you god can give rest abraham was old the bible says and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed abraham in all things in all things the lord had blessed abraham 
in all things while you are seated i'd like you to pray one prayer father every other area of my life that is yet to experience your power and your glory i bring it before your presence tonight lift your voice and pray in one minute Helas kubranda katus kia telaka shubra haskia. Me katus ke de brandi ala akasubra ke diada. Are you praying? Hmm. Now are we the sons of God, and it not doth not yet appear what we shall be like it doth not yet appear what we shall be like it doth not yet appear what we shall be like there is a making that is happening to you there is transformation that is happening to you you are evolving into a version of you that is superior in power superior in grace superior in wisdom i want you to believe it hallelujah Amen. We have been discussing and sharing truths the last few weeks. And I did tell us that the Lord gave me an instruction to teach along the graces that he has so mercifully brought to my life and even to this ministry to the end that we understand the dimensions of God that operate within this house as a family of faith and then to enhance our spiritual growth and we have been considering all of these dimensions of the investment of the spirit we started with the wisdom the spirit of wisdom that this is a dimension that god intends that the saints walk in you can walk in the wisdom of god number two we considered favor that there can there is a possibility that a believer can walk in the favor of god as a grace not just a one-off event if it happens only once it is breakthrough not favor if it is favor it must be consistent hallelujah praise the lord we'll have a very brief session tonight because i want us to pray but what i want to share with you tonight is a very deep kingdom secret and many times i struggle to share these things not because i do not want the saints to know or to learn them for we have only received them by mercy ourselves but um it is it is profitless and it may even be destructive to bring a dimension of kingdom truth to believers when there is no preparedness in their hearts to place value on it and to receive it every one of these dimensions that we continue to unveil by the spirit these dimensions are the makers of men any man who has been made by god was made by the coordinated by the synergy of these forces hallelujah and tonight i want to share with you a very deep mystery and it is my prayer that the lord would by this mystery launch us into very superior dimensions Amen. hallelujah i do not know how far i will go i do not know to what extent we we'll stretch tonight but wherever we're able to stop everything i'm teaching we will teach it again you see the thing about mentorship is you never communicate a spiritual truth once the goal is not newness the goal is freshness you have to continually repeat these truths again and again it says i will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things although ye know them and are established in this 
present truth. Hallelujah. And so tonight I'm teaching on the mystery of supernatural encounters. Hmm. I will share with you a secret tonight that has been responsible for divine encounters. And it is my prayer that you will appreciate this truth you are about to receive. It will marvelously transform your spiritual life. It will marvelously transform your destiny. Hallelujah. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. Job left us a very important key that begins our guide. It, it serves as a guide for us tonight even as we begin to explore the subject of supernatural encounters. Many believers have for a very long time, they, they have been frustrated in their Christian experience because their spiritual life looks like borrowed ideas. They hardly have convictions of their own. And so you find out that the average believer has to depend on the confidence of a pastor depend on the confidence of an apostle a prophet or the confidence of a corporate people to be able to believe certain things about god but god did not design us in this kingdom to have to depend on the conviction on of another to begin our journey it was his intent his desire that we get to a point where we become a people of persuasion and a people of conviction ourselves Hallelujah. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. The mystery of supernatural encounters. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. When I began my journey with God, there were many propositions that were brought forth from the pulpit. Well-meaning, well-intentioned men and women of God. I heard them say many things about God, referenced from scripture. They called God many names. They advocated many levels and dimensions of possibilities that God could birth in the life and the experience of a believer but I didn't seem to see a manifestation of these things and it troubled me for a long time it looked like God remained a theoretical reality that men would not be able to step into that experience my heart yearned for a level of nearness that I did not easily see around me preachers seemed very distant from the God they were talking about conferences were written or conferences were organized books were written about a god that they seemed very far from and i knew that something was wrong i knew that something was wrong not necessarily with the communicators but with the whole idea i found out that there were many people who believed certain spiritual truths not because it had become true in their lives they believed them because they liked the communicators of those truths so their their their, their faith in the truths that were communicated were not because they believed that those speakings were true they believed that those who said them were sincere people well-meaning people or lovable people but one thing i can tell you is that for as long as you live long enough upon this earth, your convictions will be tested from head to toe. And so it matters that the things that you hold there, the things that you hold as true, are true indeed. The Bible gives us a word of caution that you must be careful so that what you call light be not darkness did you know you can walk in a lie for many years you can teach a lie you can mentor people along the lines of a lie and then at the end of your life or when you have gone so far you will now realize that what you have been holding as true was a lie 
it is dangerous to believe a lie and hold it there and continue to build your destiny around that lie only for you to find out that what you believed was not true if i have any fear in my life or any concern in my life it is that i do not want to believe something that after many years i will find out that i've believed a lie and so i'm not ashamed to vet what i hold as true i am unashamed i will vet them unapologetically and if for any reason i find out that what i am holding is not the truth i would declare my disloyalty immediately and without turning back many believers are unable to be transformed because of the our emotional attachment to information that may have been embedded in our minds that may not be the truth the bible says the only thing that saves is the truth not what you like ye shall know the truth and it is the truth that sustains the power to make you free are we blessed the bible is full of encounters from genesis to revelation scripture lets us see that most of the people almost everyone who was mightily used by god as recorded in scripture at one point or the other in their lives they encountered the god of the bible in ways that were spectacular in ways that burned that conviction in their hearts and some of them died believing their experiences some of them based on that experience they rose to be mighty men and women who were used by god and it is important for us to study this subject of encounters because we are gathered today by the privilege of god's grace and this ministry you see is a product of encounters and it's important for us to know because if you lack encounters you will be surprised how stunted how limited you will be in your christian work are we together what are encounters let's discuss the subject of supernatural encounters very briefly and very quickly supernatural encounters are experiences that bring reality and conviction to us experiences that bring reality and they also bring conviction to us experiences sent by god to bring reality the awareness of a reality and to also bring conviction this is very powerful the way god designed man god designed man in a way that every time every time you are convicted and persuaded about a truth you stop being ashamed or afraid of it now the way the way we operate in the earth realm anything you are ashamed to advocate it is because there is no conviction in that area this is how god designed us are we together now so when you meet a herbalist as 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 tattered and as uninviting as he looks he is not ashamed of his state because there is a depth of conviction and persuasion he believes in what he is doing he believes in its ability to transform anyone who is interested and so he would sit down in a dark dirty or smelly place whatever it is he will conjure all kinds of rubbish and then he would tell you with certainty that this is able to bless your life this is able to transform you this is able to bring supernatural solutions and he will dare you encounters they are experiences supernatural experiences that bring conviction that establish or furnish the reality of god or the reality of anything whatsoever in the life of the believer please pay attention why are encounters important encounters are important because 
our walk upon this earth require conviction requires faith our earth walk requires faith and faith is based on convictions convictions are based on encounters there has to be listen carefully there has to be if you are going to walk effectively the bible says the just shall live by faith four times in scripture it says the just shall live by his faith and faith is predicated upon encounters i am holding a mic on my hand there is nothing you will say or do to convince me otherwise because my senses are relating with this reality are we together now i'm holding a mic your opinion may not have an effect on me because i am surrounded by the awareness of this reality it is lack of encounters that has produced the spiritual vacillations that we have in the body of christ today and so today i believe this tomorrow i believe this next tomorrow i do not believe what i used to believe again and then by next week i rush back and i think i now believe it all of these vacillations are proof that there is no certainty to the truths that we claim to know i'm not just talking of growth many believers today cannot exactly tell you they cannot make an articulate statement of the things that they believe today they believe god delivers and by tomorrow they say I'm, I'm not sure that i understand deliverance again and then next week they say okay i'm healed another time they say no 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 i'm not going to tell lies i am sick are we together now one moment they believe in confessing the word they are speaking the word another moment they say leave that thing it's not just about confession so you see that the vacillations in our christian experience they are proof to us that we are missing something there is something we do not understand about god and the way he walks the second reason why we need encounters is that the the challenges that will surround your destiny and your assignment will require encounters to supply the staying power the power for continuity as far as your destiny is concerned will depend on encounters i can tell you this for free there is nobody's journey to destiny that will be entirely a bed of roses you are going to be confronted by issues vicissitudes of life men and systems and structures will stand to oppose that which god intends to do in your life it will take encounters to supply the staying power there are preachers who begin ministry for instance and they say i love god i was called to serve god and after two years of no results no success they pack it up and they say i'm tired let me just go and look for a job there are people today who resign their jobs because they thought they were called into ministry and after 10 years they look back and say oh dear, god punished the man who advised me to to leave my job and get into this vineyard i cheated myself i wasted my time no encounters encounters provide the staying power if you want to continue and finish strong you will depend on encounters more than information when you see some of our fathers of faith 20 years 30 years 40 years some 50 years continuing in the ministry serving the purposes of god i assure you an ambition does not have that kind of power to keep you long you will need encounters are we together now yes sir when you lack encounters anything that captures your attention for the moment will drive your life until you find another thing that seems to be valuable to you so you have all kinds of people today they are in business next tomorrow they are here next tomorrow they are here they they continue to rigmarole around life no reality no conviction no staying power I think it was last week or the week before last that I was whilst teaching I mentioned something that I should mention again there are many people today 
who were very very serious with God loving Jesus passionately pursuing the purposes of God their entire lives revolved around the kingdom but today some of them in old age they are they are barely born again and if you ask them they will tell you I tried God I gave my best I committed everything God failed me this your Christianity thing does not work have you found out the reasons why people leave God and the things of God you will be amazed some because of money someone offered some money and they will dump the faith life without thinking twice others because of marriage they find someone who is blessed and even if they are not of similar faith they just leave everything these are people who will sing all kinds of songs about their love for god people have left god in a heartbeat because they were looking for jobs people left ministry because they got visa they told everybody they had set up their leadership they set up protocol as soon as a door opened they said just continue serving god i will serve him from afar off i go and god said this is how much you love me i'm teaching you this otherwise you will be disappointed at your own life when you see the way you will forget about god in the presence of certain realities it is encounters that can keep us regardless how you rise regardless the lifting that comes to your life and regardless the challenges that surround you you are still standing many believers are falling by the wayside especially within this end time you see lots of believers after 10 years 20 years of serving the lord respectfully speaking they now come up to say look i've been living a lie i don't care about this thing again i'm not serious with god i quit no encounters from altar call to spiritual growth most believers are not serious with god because they have not found god to be anything to be serious about are we following now yes there are many young people who are only serving god because they are under the custody of their parents and they do not have an option otherwise it's not because they love that god let's do bible study and they grudgingly sit down and do it and then for many parents the day you now leave them to themselves you will be marvelously surprised that the person you have been calling pastor was never interested in anything about god other people hold on to god because they are in school and they want to do well they are hoping he would just escort them until they are done and once they are done they say god i've used you enough you find your way and go while i live my life Are we together now there are others who do this business of God because they have been taught that God can bless and when you are in ministry you can get honorarium when you are in ministry you can get all kinds of things someone can come and dash you a car somebody can give you a house and when they try they apply for jobs it doesn't work they apply for whatever they just come and then they start ministry and a semblance of passion and then after one year they realize they have to rent an auditorium they realize that there are things that are coming they count the offering and it's nothing to write home about and they say god i've tried for you i gave you one year of my life i'm not ready to continue being a fool like this because we do not have encounters a time came when the disciples of Jesus became very frustrated listen when Jesus began his journey with them I remember Jesus telling them all kinds of things and they ran they left their fishing a time came Peter was waiting for Jesus to come and he said look we have left all to follow you if you are deceiving us tell us now so that we can redeem the time and get back to what we are doing and Jesus looked at them they were offended they were frustrated the staying power to finish strong was not there as soon as they captured Jesus and they thought that this superstar would just defeat everyone just shake his hand and everyone would be under the anointing when Jesus gave himself watch what happened the Bible says they ran away is it in your Bible 
every one of them remember shortly before that time peter vowed jesus even pleaded with peter let me wash your feet he said no way not you now peter ran away the fathers of faith and the patriarchs that we celebrate today world over were not just people who were interested in serving god alone these were men and women who had solid encounters they had encounters with god encounters that would never they, they were not going to change from it most of my experiences and the new seasons in my life have come as a result of encounters most of them most of them have come as a result of encounters now let me tell you this there are negative demonic and satanic encounters pay attention i must tell you this for instance there are many people today in deception and the confidence that that deception thrives on is the encounters that they had there are many people who believe they went to heaven i tell you by the authority of scripture where they went was not heaven i can tell you this both the description the experience and the result tells you it's not heaven they went to there are people today who claim they had out of body experiences and many of them interacted with strange spirits familiar spirits they thought it was the holy spirit do you know that almost every error in the body of christ today came as a result of these same encounters many people will tell you i had an encounter either with an angel or a spirit and he told me right and from there they begin to ship in and advocate all kinds of error people have gone to fast for days and they met a spirit because you see i'll be sharing with you that one of the principal triggers for encounter is hunger hunger when you find a believer who is hungry please be fast to guide that person because satan too looks for hunger hunger is proof of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite so you want to start on a journey i want to know you i want to live for you i want to serve you i want to love you with all my heart that drives you to a seven days dry prayer and fasting and you are praying you are lying down you're rolling left right and center and satan finds an opportunity your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are heightened because of that kind of consecration and satan comes as an angel of light and plants all kinds of demonic and dangerous seeds i will tell you why i'm teaching what i'm teaching tonight it's very important encounters are powerful encounters are important but if i do not give you a few guidelines because i fear for my generation our appetite for rema our appetite for new dimensions our appetite for the angelic realm our appetite for the prophetic realm is is driving us into dimensions that if not guided you have not yet seen error that will come to the body i tell you in the next five six ten years if we do not create this apostolic guidance for the body of christ many young people will delve into different Different versions of error you will not even know what is authentic Christianity again are we together years ago in Zaria I remember I think I've shared it here. I don't know if I've shared it here there were some gentlemen who came in I think from Kano also one gentleman just came believing he was Jesus not a servant of Jesus believing he was Jesus and based on their revelation they believed that i was like their john the baptist so they came and together with the boys I, jokes apart i really mean it i wouldn't stand here if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking after service these boys stood wore a regalia 
and then someone was standing by his side I don't, know, I don't know what they call that one now and then when they stood before me i thought they were cracking jokes with me i was even laughing even though i was tired until i found out they were not playing now do you know listen 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 do you know those boys started with prayer hmm. prayer does many things so you have to understand the side effects of being open to the realm of the spirit and i will teach you how to create that guidance encounters it i've started by appreciating encounters but i am telling you there there is there is a management system that must be introduced fast because the body of christ is in trouble and it's encounters that will lead to the error of this generation of believers encounters satan has programmed arsenals of error that will be shipped to the body of christ through encounters pseudo christian experiences pseudo ex angelic experiences pseudo heavenly experiences and they bring all kinds of destructive doctrines with full assurance there are people today who hear voices they stepped into the prophetic and the holy ghost has never been part of any revelation most of those revelations come from demons do they hear well yes sir they hear now i'm not being listen listen when you when you are here don't just be listening and thinking of any man of god i'm teaching the body of christ because most of the people you see when you hear this some of us already have preconceived biases and the bias is because we've never really been serious with god it's not because we are passionate we've not been serious with god so anything that looks supernatural we fight it i'm not endorsing your laxity There are all kinds of errors. Those errors continue to be translated into teachings. You see, the thing about encounters is that every time you have an encounter, the urge to document it and to share it is there. And we live in a generation right now that is passionate with giving applause. Anything that is scarce, anything that is new, anything that looks like rema, it looks like you derive your respect in the body of Christ from the scarceness of your communication. If we are not careful, there will be bitter casualties. I tell you this by the Spirit. Many people are beginning to ship doctrines of demons and communicate them and many people keep swallowing it hook line and sinker satan is doing this because he knows that the spirit of revelation we're coming there when i teach you this you will know why we need the spirit of revelation hmm. hallelujah there was a man of god many years ago I didn't have a direct relationship with him but we were so blessed by his teachings he was an amazing man he taught well he taught powerfully his teachings were powerful he was some somewhere around Asia eventually when I started studying his teachings after some time he started having all kinds of strange encounters and one day I had to say uh-uh 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 uh -uh, something 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 is wrong this guy began to teach all kinds of concepts he began to manifest attributes that i knew there were problems with today as i talk to you i'm not even sure he's in ministry again powerful man of god sincerely so i don't know what happened because of this search for encounters let me construct what i'm saying so you'll understand number one encounters are important we need encounters so that they create convictions but number two encounters are a two a two-edged sword on one hand they can bless and lift but on another hand they can bring conviction towards error that destroys are we together so people have delved into all sorts of things young believers especially have delved into all kinds of things there are people who have bought all sorts of books you get into a christian library right now and you look at the books that are there sometimes you want to run away because you see certain books the moment you open you wonder was it the holy spirit who inspired this 
There are dangerous and devilish books. There are people who have read certain books and while they were reading, the next thing they woke up and found out they had been lost. They went into realms and dimensions, interacted with strange spirits and came. Do you know how many religions are in the world? We live in an internet age. I give you as an assignment. When you go type religions, how many religions are in the world? Enter. You will be amazed. Let me tell you this. Every single one of those religions have followers. If they did not have followers, they would not thrive enough to be seen as a religion. And those followers came because of a semblance of results that came from encounters. This is the secret that can preserve a destiny, can preserve a ministry, so that you don't start something and after 10 years, you are teaching something else and at a point you don't even understand what you are doing again. supernatural encounters now let me explain something why do encounters have negative side effects also i will tell you why because you see encounters especially if they are supernatural visionary encounters now you have to understand that an encounter does not have to be visionary to be called an encounter you can have an encounter without a vision once it is supernatural and it can imprint reality and conviction, it's called an encounter. Are we together now? But now I'm talking about visionary encounters. Do you know, if you are open to the realm of the spirit, there are many things that begin to happen to you immediately. You are open to the realm of the spirit. Number one, you'll find out that being open to the realm of the spirit, either by the Holy Ghost or any other spirit, already gives you an advantage over the earth realm whether it is true divination or it is true genuine spiritual encounter with the holy spirit the moment you are open to the realm of the spirit you already have an advantage above the ordinary believer number two the modus operandi of the earth realm is not the same as the realm of the spirit for instance in the realm of the spirit i do not have to talk to you to know what i'm saying i can transfer my thoughts directly to you without speaking if I hold this plant in the realm of the spirit, I don't have to study it biologically. You see that now? Yes, I can transfer the feeling of that plant and have the impulse of that understanding. You have to understand how I'm giving you certain examples. In the realm of the spirit, time and distance does not operate the way it works here. If I need to move from here to this fan, I will have to walk. But in the realm of the spirit, I can be here and immediately leave this spot and I am there. An example, what happens to you when you are in a dream? You can be in a dream and in one moment you are in a house and then the scene changes, you are somewhere else. The same you. And yet you are still there lying down in your room. Are we together now? Now, in the realm of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, listen carefully, the Holy Spirit is not the only one who has information any spirit at all including the devil has some information that is higher than this earth realm are we together now you would learn that there were times the bible records how that these these fallen angels came and the bible says they had interactions with the daughters of men they did not just come and meet them and produce giants out of them there were things that they taught them there were certain forbidden knowledge that was given to them satan himself is not an ignorant spirit i hope you know that because satan was once in heaven number two it was not satan alone that fell in heaven he fell with other spirits and there is no record of eroding the memory of the things that they know they still have that knowledge many people have interacted with strange spirits entered into all kinds of fraternities and covenants with them in exchange to superior knowledge they have used it in it they have used it to advance technology they have used it in different forms and in different fashions and some of them are honest enough to tell you that it was not just the making of themselves. They were assisted by the realm of the spirit. So when you are open to the realm of the spirit, you will encounter many things. Can I tell you this? 
if you do not know the road to go to a place and you find me there i can lead you anywhere and tell you that's where you were to go to this is what is happening to many people so they are open to the realm of the spirit because of the energy that is exerted through fasting and prayer spiritual exercises the moment you do that it is easy to have that ascendance in the spirit but the challenge is when you are there now satan is more than happy to hold your hand and usher you and he will give you a tour that is not consistent with the character of Christ. We return with some of these experiences and because we do not have a system of verification, this is also the reason why there is a lot of inaccuracy even in the prophetic. Because the prophetic works by the same formula. You are open to the realm of the spirit and you capture speakings, sights and sounds from the realm of the spirit. But when there is no system to order and organize it, based on scripture, you can download all kinds of things. That's why some work, some don't work. Because they are a capture of mass information from the realm of the spirit. What I'm teaching you may look a bit complicated, but just pay attention. You will understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I have had several visionary encounters. By the grace of God, this is a realm of reality that I live in. And I can tell you, if the Lord did not teach me the system of guidance that I want to provide for you, I probably would have been in all shades of error by now. All shades of error. The next thing I need to teach you about the realm of the spirit is that the realm of the spirit operates with similitudes. And you must understand not the activity, but the spirit, the meaning of those activities. Because one of the reasons why error has come into the body of Christ is because most times we want to repeat exactly what we saw happen in the realm of the spirit. So I give you an instance. If in the realm of the spirit, I... I look at these people in the realm of the spirit and I see them maybe dancing or doing some kind of thing. I may not stay to decipher the essence of what was happening. I will come down and want to act out the same thing I saw. So if I see someone walking five times from the realm of the spirit, it may be a prophetic typology of something but then I come physically and I now say well based on what I saw except if God says to act it out but I now tell the person do what you saw and by the time that person leaves and gets result someone else will come and before you know it it will become a spiritual pattern are we together now yes someone will now go to his house and say for me to get a miracle I must walk around five times with no understanding When God began to open me up to encounters, I became troubled myself. Once upon a time, those days in Zaria, there was such a move of the spirit and people started having extraordinary encounters where they would have what you know to be gold dust, silver dust, physically. Gold dust will begin to appear and it, there is an encounter that happened like that one time in church history. It began to happen in several places and people started idolizing those encounters. It didn't last more than three weeks and God seized it till tomorrow. It was an act of his mercy. Otherwise, some people would have built monuments around it. You see that now? There is a serious disclaimer. Listen, do you know why I'm teaching you this? Don't just get believers born again and start stretching them fast 21 days, fast 30 days, unguided and unassisted. It looks like an accurate spiritual journey, but you are about to lead the people into experiences that their maturity cannot handle. They will interact with devilish spirits. They will return with arrogance from that encounter until the fatality that happens in their future brings you to remorse. You now regret the fact that you expose the people this way. We have to be careful. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. And if we do not submit ourselves to it, we will be in trouble. When Jesus Christ began to walk with the disciples, we must follow the order and the pattern that he used to build the saints. Are we together now? Yeah. Supernatural encounters. The realm of the spirit is a very vast realm, full of all kinds of possibilities. Having said this, 
the bible itself listen carefully the bible provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters the bible scripture provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters that means that it is possible for you to enjoy supernatural encounters benefit from them and yet not bring error out of them to deceive the body remember the morale of this teaching is to help us experience encounters one of the graces that we have enjoyed and we enjoy in this ministry is the grace for encounters but i will tell you why it has been effective without birthing all versions of error almost all encounters if left unbalanced will bring error almost all encounters if left unbalanced or even, how do i put it now is, is it unbalanced will bring all kinds of error The body of Christ today is like a patient in ICU and encounters have brought these kinds of imbalance. There are men and women of God today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters. There are individuals today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters. And you see, one thing about conviction is conviction will always lead to influence. The moment you are convicted about something, eventually someone will believe you. I hope you're understanding what I'm teaching so far. Yes. So the Bible provides a biblical roadmap to supernatural encounters. This was the first thing the Lord began to teach me that before i am open to these extraordinary spiritual experiences i must understand the pattern of scripture so that all of these encounters i have will pass through the sieve of the word the sieve of how god behaves let me tell you there are many encounters in my life that scripture has filtered you will never hear me share them i have met many many demon spirits but it may just be one or two occasions that you hear me say that because you see when you are teaching this is the reason why most times i do not like to talk about my encounters do you know why i do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone i want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that i want to show you the average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry for instance will feel bad feel insulted and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions it's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience how long have you been born again 10 years do you see do you hear well not exactly i hear the holy ghost sometimes but, ah, I say, my goodness my god that means something is wrong with your christian experience so in a bid in a bid to honor um what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra anything that just just let me hear a sound let me see a being demonic or spiritual let me just see something and hear something and because of that hunger on one hand god intends to give you these encounters but the reason why for many of us god does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them it's not because your spiritual level has not reached there god just wants to help you he's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine Are we blessed this is how the Lord taught me the apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things I've seen standing here and preaching if I did not have this understanding that I'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight you will keep seeing 
the discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers many sincere people do not have that every time their eyes see something there is an urge to say what they are seeing and it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers so you see that services become full of just revelatory processes not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught that interest to endure doctrine is not there again apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something i don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this remember that i love the body of christ and remember that everything i say is to the intents that we become matured are we together now The average man of God is under severe pressure right now. Pressure for the prophetic, pressure to be able to reveal something. If you go to pray with someone and you bring Bible verses and you tell the person, Acts chapter this verse, this says this, you, you, you can even see the disconnect. We wasted our time, prepared honorarium, cooked food to come and receive this rubbish. There, you see that there, there is something wrong. While you are laughing, I want you to pay attention. You may not see the effect now. Let it continue down the line. That's why people lie, even with the prophetic. Because there has to be a way. That pressure makes people lie. We say things God is not saying. Body of Christ, hear me. This is not just a message for koinonia. This is a message for the body of Christ. When a man of God can teach scripture and help you understand the ways of God, he's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned. I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears, but we're not interested. And very clearly the person becomes frustrated. And as a result, he will say, you know what? If this is the formula for relevance, let me go for my fasting. And the devil says, exactly. This is what I wanted. He waits for you and once you are done with your fasting and all of that he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things you find out that the more you see the more you are deviating from god's patterns many people did not start the way they are now let me tell you i submit to you it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed this is what i want to teach you now there is a road map that if you follow if you follow you will never mislead the body through encounters your encounters will profit you and then profit the body if you are operating in the prophetic here please listen to me because this is this particularly will help you are we blessed So the Bible lets us know that encounters are very important. They create conviction. Whether encounters just with the word as you're studying or visionary encounters. When God was giving me a revelation about this ministry, I had supernatural encounters. I've shared some of them with you. My life is full of all kinds of encounters at different junctions of my life. You would hear fathers like Bishop David Oedipo share their encounters. They would tell you he was in an 18-hour vision. Is that true? And he saw this and that and explain it. Several other men of God will tell you there are others who were led by angels into realms and they were taught certain dimensions of the healing ministry. There are people who had all kinds of encounters some of them have profited the body of christ today now let me begin to teach you how to balance encounters rule number one no encounter is equal to doctrine no encounter no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine 
do not make doctrine out of encounters do not make doctrine out of encounters doctrines listen encounters are they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings personalized dealings means that is God's way of working with you to help you to be effective it will profit the body of Christ but do not turn encounters into doctrines so if let me, let me just leave that issue so that we don't create trouble in the body of Christ but it's very important for you to know this rule number one do not suddenly turn an encounter into a doctrine the doctrines of scripture are already stated it is true listen carefully there is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture and if we violate them do you know what will happen we will start creating pseudo christian experiences that are not exactly god rule number one do not create doctrines out of encounters number two every encounter must submit to scripture every encounter you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture every encounter no matter even if it's jesus you see any encounter must submit to scripture no matter how extraordinary that encounter is number three you interpret encounters listen carefully or let me put it this way scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters do not interpret encounters with feelings you must go to scripture for instance two of us can have a vision i can see a chain in the spirit you can see a chain too it means different things to both of us we cannot create i'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of christ there are people who god has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity and we honor them but there is a big mistake do not say every time you see chains it means bondage it is not true you have to go to the bible to get your explanation not your mind a chain does not always mean bondage nakedness does not always mean shame so by the time i put all these things if you see a chain bondage if you see nakedness shame nakedness can mean intimacy it can mean you are growing with the holy ghost the Holy Spirit and Scripture has to interpret that. Are we together now? Most people just come up with their ideas about encounters. This is what I saw. This is what I saw. I think this should be it. And we ship it down and mislead people. That includes dreams. Look up please. When you wake up from a dream, you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it. Except if that book submits to Scripture. Are we together now? Many belief systems that have authorized Satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters. Take note of these rules. One, remember that no encounter in itself becomes a doctrine no the doctrine of scripture is written do you know the thing about doctrines doctrines should be taught and explained not created the doctrines that make for the maturity of the believer is already there you have to understand this every other thing supports our growth it does not create the basis for it the bible listen carefully the bible has already set the manual for the growth of the believer there's no need to invent another route for spiritual growth. Jesus, the early church, the patriarchs have set enough precedence. There is no level of spiritual growth you want to attain unto that scripture has not provided the roadmap for. So doctrines must submit to scripture and your interpretation must come from scripture, not your ideas.
scripture hallelujah your interpretation must come from scripture now listen very carefully the holy ghost when he began to teach me about encounters he taught me four cardinal encounters listen carefully don't assume you understand what i'm saying there are four foundational encounters and the holy spirit taught me that these are the major encounters every believer must have if you do not have these four encounters no matter which other encounter you have there will be trouble i'm going to run through them because of time why am i teaching you this so that when you begin to have extraordinary encounters because you see soaking yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error Are you blessed i have kept these four encounters and i pay attention to them my entire life these are the encounters that have become pillars that guide me as i approach the realm of the spirit and i'm introducing you to this and this is also a message to the body of christ these encounters that i'm about to list and maybe briefly just touch they supersede any other encounter listen if these are the only encounters you have in your life and you never have any vision again in your life you will still fulfill your god-given mandate the foundational encounters that every child of god or everyone on earth should have are you ready for this have you understood everything i've said so far yes I want you to appreciate these things that we teach because number one they are consistent with scripture but number two some of these trainings came from a standpoint of pain blood and tears I'm praying that you will place value on them some of you what I'm saying you may not need it now until you keep rising one day you will see and thank the lord that you got this doctrinal balance even as you approach the realm of the spirit some of you as i share this with you the lord will use it to give you hope and give you confidence as far as your christian experience is concerned four encounters the lord taught me number one the first encounter that every believer must have is encounter with jesus the son of the living god please write it down it does not mean a visionary picture of jesus you can have an encounter through scripture an encounter through the word of salvation with jesus the son of the living god please write it down just be patient and write it down the bible says in john chapter 3 and verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son he says that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life can i tell you this no matter how many visions you see in your life if you do not have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple as that encounters don't redeem people it is jesus that redeems people encounters don't give people eternal life it is the son of the living god so if you have 30 encounters in your life and jesus is not part of them you are on your way to hell ladies and gentlemen please hear me this is this these are safety nets an encounter with the son of the living god the first encounter that the hunger of any living being would push him to in that order is an encounter with the son of the living god it is a foundational encounter you must have you must pray that everybody around your life your church they must have that encounter what does it mean to encounter the son of the living god that the holy spirit 
through the ministry of the gospel will furnish the reality of the love of Jesus the love of the father to your heart and bring you to a point where you accept the truth of his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now to the end that you receive of his life eternal life the Bible says it's an encounter this is the record that God hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son. It says, whosoever hath the son hath life eternal. Everybody say encounter with the son. There are many people today, I'm sorry to use this expression, but even people in ministry, who operate the prophetic but have not had this encounter I hope you know that yes there are people who came just from tradition and then they came into the city and just continued what they were doing an encounter with the Son of God I know people who started having visions and had prophetic inclinations even before they got born again yes that is a possibility your very wiring your very prophetic wiring can tilt you to the prophetic and people can begin to recognize it some of you know people like that in your villages they are sincere people they don't practice any evil that you know but we call them seers they have eyes that see they can tell you be careful and what they say will happen exactly so can I tell you those same people need encounters the encounter with the son of the living God this is doctrine if you do not have an encounter with the son of the living God you are in trouble why because no other encounter sustains the power to save you and translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son my brothers and my sisters no matter how long you fast no matter how long you pray no matter how many realms and dimensions you step into even if you go to heaven even if it's the true heaven and you come down if you don't have an encounter with the son of the living God you are going to hell it's as simple and honest as that are we learning the first foundational encounter that every believer must have encounter with the Son of God number two very quickly the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry the ministry of the Holy Spirit in that order second only to your encounter with the son of the living God you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit please look up the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for pastors the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for preachers it's not just for some supernatural people the ministry of the Holy Spirit is for everybody Jesus told us that he is the only shorty to our being guided he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth Satan can use truth to destroy it's not only a lie that destroys the truth can destroy too many believers have not been introduced into this encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit <laughs> an encounter with the Holy Spirit is more than praying in tongues no just because hands were laid on you and you are praying in tongues when we say have you met the Holy Ghost you say yes no 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 just because you have eaten someone's food does not mean you've met the person no you benefited from the person but have you met the person can I tell you this especially for those of us who are called into ministry all those who have been mightily used by God from scripture and modern history and even today will tell you they can trace their exploits to this one encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit we've dealt with that here so I don't want to go so deep into that the Holy Spirit realized the Holy Spirit is God the Holy Spirit is not an archangel the Holy Spirit is not one of those winds flowing in the realm of the Spirit no the Holy Spirit is God you can encounter his office when you are encountering the Son he plays a role there but you can en encounter the person of the Holy Spirit it is true The benefit of that encounter is guidance. I've taught you. 
the benefit of that encounter is empowerment direction the holy spirit so that whatever you see and whatever you hear you can trust him to guide you he will tell you what is from him and he will tell you what is not from him you do not use the purity of what you are seeing to know whether it's from god or not no it is the voice of the holy spirit that will help you decipher you will see many good things in your christian experience but they are not from god it's not in this kingdom is we don't deal with good or bad we deal with whether the holy spirit is involved or not no matter how good it is if the holy spirit who is the spirit of the father is not involved in that process stay away no matter how good encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit koinonia is god helping you tonight so there are times while i'm having several visions maybe in the miracle service and all of that you see it happen i can have the vision say of a coffin and i can see death now i don't just announce the holy spirit listen all of those visions will pass through the sieve of these foundational visions these foundational encounters are we together now any vision i see that does not glorify the sun i will never announce it i will throw it like that the same way you are passing the street and you see a madman you just know that somebody was there and you passed you are focusing on what you are looking at there are many other things you will see other than what god wants you to see but you must first ask yourself a question this is why i'm teaching you this because i have had this encounter with the son of god every other encounter i have i must ask myself does this encounter reveal jesus and does this bring him glory either in my life or the life of those i'm about to minister it to if it does not capture the revelation of the son and the glorification of the same no matter how spectacular the vision is i will dump it is someone learning now an encounter with the son gives balance to every other encounter you have if it does not reveal the son and does not bring him glory throw it out of your life number two an encounter with the holy spirit the holy spirit gives you direction the holy spirit gives you guidance let me tell you this i wish we had the time I hope you know that in your Christian experience, you will get to a point where you will meet a lot of people with influences that produce results. But if you have a rich ministry with the Holy Spirit, you will be able to know that this is not the Holy Spirit. And you may even be able to help them. Listen, in my life and in ministry, I've had the opportunity of praying for people, especially kids kids that they brought that were demonstrating superhuman abilities it was because of this relationship with the holy spirit are we together remember in the book of acts the experience of paul remember the little girl who was using divination many of us now would have entered partnership with her in ministry many of us you can't allow that opportunity to pass you by like that that is a rich opportunity for strategic alliance she even volunteered this is a great man i mean what else would you for someone to announce you using her credibility but he looked and looked and said no something is wrong the holy spirit i have met people in my life this is a true story i have met people in my life who called my name and prophesied to me and they were not christians they've not given their life to christ not it's not something hidden I remember one time, I think it was Niger, I was going to have a meeting, I think it was Niger Republic or so, and we were going, we, went, we flew to Lagos and then went by road. Somewhere when we were doing just the immigration formalities, I remember, some of you go to the market and you see these people, they are there, they can call your name with uncanny accuracy. If you do not have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, your search for visionary solutions will lead you to delusion. Joshua Selman, ah, who are you? Well, I'm not exactly an evil person, but I'm not by 
everybody's visionary experience is powered from a source what source powers that vision it is not the correctness of the information is the source that powers it and listen you have no right to just look at people and begin to judge them if your own relationship with the holy spirit is not alive by what parameter you will become judgmental and you will mix both good and bad and call everybody fake it is on the strength of your relationship with the holy spirit you can decipher Are we learning now yes sir there are times that I've shaken hands with people and I look at them sincerely and you see them manifesting a semblance of the anointing and I know this is not God sometimes I make one statement and they are delivered there and they themselves will be surprised I know a woman one time that I prayed for this woman would have visionary encounters people would come to her house she can pray for you she said she had testimonies of people who were barren, who God opened their wombs. But she knew something was wrong because when she lies to sleep, she will be tormented by evil spirits. Yet this gift supposedly was working in her life. The day I met her, she came. Thank God she was a sincere woman. She was honest and she told me. She said this is a gift that has been working in her life. People have sowed into her life. She's had results. But I knew this was not the spirit. Now, it didn't mean the woman was bad. I have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. I know how he operates. I know what is not him. And I held the woman's hands and I prayed for her. Why did they flog the apostles in the Bible? Because they tampered with somebody's way of getting money. There were some evil men who saw that young girl and when they saw her instead of them to lead her to someone who will help her they decided to cash in on the opportunity while those demons continue to torment that girl i love the apostles when they came they didn't have time for rubbish they rebuked that spirit even though they flogged them later on but at least jesus was glorified are we together encounter with the holy spirit listen to me until you cultivate your relationship with the holy spirit you will never step into the realm of discernment and sensitivity and in this end time brothers and sisters you need sensitivity there are many things that look like god that is not god there are many things that look like god speaking to your destiny i can prophesy favor upon you now and say in the name of Jesus Christ be favored you will say amen the moment you say amen you will see a text in your phone after service and it's 419 people they will tell you give us your account number give us something and um, um, there is some money that you want somewhere you have you seen those kinds of people and the devil will now connect it to the prophetic word of favor and that begins your destruction for instance but when you know the Holy Ghost, you know how he operates. You know that this is not God. And you dump that nonsense out of your phone and give yourself rest. There are times you sit down and you are doing, you are talking with people, you are about to do a business with them. They are so articulate, they are intelligent, everything is right. But here comes the Holy Ghost again. It tells you, no, no. I know I told you that I will bless you next week, but this is not it. The blessing is coming but this is not it and there are times that many things will not look like it but it is it it is still him that will tell you you see that is the strange thing with the holy spirit you will see a job that does not look like it and the holy ghost will tell you take that job Fifty thousand. when i am waiting for one that will give me 250 and the holy ghost will tell you take it but this does not look like the vision I saw because you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. He will say, take it. Whilst you are in that job, your uncle will come and it is through that job you will be sent for a training and you will meet your destiny helper and within five months you will leave that job into where God showed you now. Had you not heard God, you will not even know how to navigate to that realm. Are we learning now? Number three, very quickly encounter with the word of god it would never tire me to teach you this you have to learn it the third foundational encounter you must have superior to all other encounters is an encounter with the word of god please look at me if you are not sound in scripture 
you, you see deception will be the devil will take you for a ride you have to be sound in scripture encounter with the word of god what is the word of god the word of god is a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom god's modus operandi the word of god reveals number one god's character number two the word of god reveals how god operates when you encounter the word of god you know how god operates and you know how he does not operate there is a way the god of the bible never operates never operates never operates most believers are not sound in scripture that's why it's easy to fall into the trap of deception the devil comes and markets all kinds of lies and just sways us like that listen in this end time we need high level illumination knowledge of god's word to know what to do there are people who have no business relocating abroad but because they do not understand the character of scripture someone just tells you i want to lift you you have to go back to that encounter how does god lift the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Many things that we have called greener pastures are not greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. You see that? I'm not saying there's anything wrong having all these experiences, but the word of God must be your guide. Can I tell you this? As powerful as supernatural encounters are, if you start ministry just because you saw a vision, you will suffer as if it's not God that called you. There are people today who are frustrated and sometimes sincere people, when they come, they say, Apostle, I can't understand. They will show me a documentation of their vision and I know truly that vision came from God. But it is the principle of scripture that controls your success. The visions are only support systems to help guide your conviction. When Jesus came and walked upon the earth, is it not heaven that he came from? Why did he need to learn scripture? Why would you come from heaven through the womb of a woman and submit yourself to the learning of scripture? From heaven! Jesus did not come from the realm of the spirit. He came directly from heaven, not even heaven, from the throne. He came to the earth and submitted himself to this encounter. So when Satan came, he didn't say, Satan, you are stupid. You forgot I am God. He said, it is written. He had a right to say, I hope you know I am God. Satan, I know this is you. My discernment is still in place. The Holy Ghost is in me. Leave this place no he wanted us to learn so he said it is written for every temptation the devil brought jesus did not use his encounters for defense he used scriptures it is written you don't tell the devil you are joking god called me that is nonsense the realm of the spirit does not care what has the bible said as your system of defense I can never fail. Why? I know what I saw. You are the only one who saw it. The realm of the spirit is asking you, why should we stop oppressing you? I saw a vision. In that vision, I saw a plant and it was bringing oranges. That's a vision, my brothers and my sisters. What will give you fruitfulness is it is written. I had many visions about koinonia in abuja i would have been surprised and shocked disappointed and frustrated if it was the only thing if i place my vision on a billboard with my name written hello abuja i am joshua selman it happened on a thursday night when i was sleeping i saw the heavens open and i saw the map of abuja <laughs> you just laugh and say all these stupid people listen to me this ministry thrives not just because of visions. The visions benefit us and add to our convictions. But everything works because it is written. One more time, shout it. Say, it is written. One more time, say, it is written. That means anything you tell me that is not consistent with what is written, I can change it. Because this foundational encounter is greater than any other encounter. 
a genuine man of God, even if it's me, I can look at you and say that based on the vision I'm seeing, I saw an obituary. This is the reason why you see many times when I prophesy to people, I tell them what I saw, but I'm quick to tell them, no, 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 I'm not a prophet of doom. We have this encounter also. We have the power based on what is written to veto whatever it is that we have seen. This is what brings perspective to the, orchestra, the operation of the prophetic. Imagine that you come and I leave you, I say, ah, you came for koinonia, I don't know what brought you here today because with what I'm seeing, I saw a coffin. May God show you mercy. No, I didn't, I didn't know. Koinonia, why do you think you are going to succeed in life? Why do you think you will see the end of this year? Listen, 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 listen. Why do you think the dream you saw, you saw them dragging your trousers and your primary school in that dream? Why do you think you will still succeed in spite of it? Listen to me. It was written so that it cannot be changed. I believe this no matter what my eye sees no matter what my ears hear no matter what encounters I have I only believe those encounters if I find them consistent with what is written if that encounter is not consistent with what is written I use what is written to change that encounter listen this looks like I'm just joking with you. If you don't learn this, you will live a defeated Christian life. Having visions and you'll never succeed. This is the reason why many people have notebooks full of visions. And there is no, there is no progress in their lives. Because they ignore this. They throw it away. And they begin to move according to what I saw. I saw, um, what's today's date? I saw 15th of August. And then I saw dollars. That's a vision. That will not give you favor. It may be that God is telling you through that similitude that I want to bless you. But whether it will happen or not depends on it is written. What you do with that vision is you now open your scripture and you now find scriptures that are consistent with that vision. That vision now supports your confidence. But the real producer of the results is not what you saw. It's, it is written. One more time shout it. It is If I didn't believe this, I would have died since. Since I would have died since. You don't know the kinds of visions. You know, as a man of God, people send you all kinds of things. I've had well-meaning people send me text messages. Apostle, be careful. I saw a ghastly motor accident. And they are not wrong. Some of them are accurate prophets of God. I'm not, this is not sarcasm. Sincere people. And I know that was the plan of the devil. So when you wake up in the morning and you have a dream, don't wait for miracle service. No. Open your Bible and let it is written collide with that vision. Listen, what I'm teaching you will give you confidence so that you are not you, you don't you don't become a victim. It's good to be blessed by men of God, but be careful so that we don't turn you into spiritual slaves. We are supposed to help you, not trap you. This is it. You need this more than Joshua Selman. Can I tell you, if you pay attention to this even more than Joshua Selman, you will succeed. This predates my arrival here. Many have come and gone. This remains written. Many have said many things and have had to cancel it. Many people have made prophetic statements and how to honorably withdraw it. But this has not been changed. Third foundational encounter. Encounter with the word of God. It's an indoctrination. 
this is the reason why my spiritual experiences profit me and they profit the body because I will never exalt any vision I see no matter how many days fasting no matter what it is if a demon spirit appears to me right now the first thing is I'm going to why is it there you see if it's there to oppress me it is written can take care of it if God is trying to send a message to me for the body of Christ I would discern the message when I'm done the demon will go but your confidence is it is written yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil why because thou art with me listen thy rod and thy staff that's what comforts me thy rod and thy staff thy rod and thy staff so I want you to if you don't know what is written it means you are in trouble imagine if Jesus did not know what was written and Satan says turn this stone into bread he says don't disturb me I am Jesus you'll be surprised Satan will still be standing there that's why he has not left your life because when you came to him he said I'm a member of koinonia he said nonsense what is that what is your member of koinonia before you were born I knew about koinonia I was in heaven what is the basis why should I leave you <sighs> okay what else do I say now listen why should you rise in life apostle declared over me you are joking apostle declared according to what I prophesied but I did as I was commanded I didn't prophesy as I wanted John said I am the voice it is not the voice that brings the power it is the word that the voice is echoing are we together now please learn what I'm telling you some of you by this there are papers you need to go back home and tear into pieces and sit with confidence and sleep like a baby and wake up it is written it is written my 2021 is blessed it is written it is written it is written it is written why do you think you'll be exempted from all the limitations that come ah, i am a member of koinonia that that is wonderful when you understand it to be that i am prophetically connected based on what the bible says but if it's just blindly i'm a member of koinonia you will you will be surprised i'm saying this because there are many believers who do not have a scriptural basis for confidence satan leave me alone why I know Apostle Joshua Selman and the demon who say Jesus I know me too I know Jesus me too I know Paul me too I know Joshua Selman you have to stand and say you better know me too it is written register it in the realm of the spirit that it is written this is why I know that I will never fail in life thank God for the many visions that I have but depending on those visions for success is deception the visions are only guides they are support systems i tell you the truth by the god of heaven the basis for the victory of my life the basis for the victory of this ministry is this immutable counsel of god it is written it is written it is written So when I tell you, you will rise, say amen, but don't just go back and say I will rise. No. When I say you will rise, quickly resort to this foundational encounter. Find the scriptures that support what I said. Then you will rise indeed. But if you just believe that just because I spoke to you, no. Are you seeing the balance now? this is why many of you do not profit from the prophetic ministry the prophetic ministry is not fake it is a genuine spiritual ministry but just because an anointed man spoke over your life just because he revealed and what he revealed was true when he blessed you your spiritual life went down because you had confidence that this man knows God his word does not fail but you ignored it is written A 
it is written it is written when men say there is a casting down for me i will say there is a lifting up so based on that when i say in the name of jesus you are exempted from evil as you are saying amen your mentality is connecting that amen with this that's what plugs it into the power line to produce results anything i tell you don't just say amen connect it to a scripture then you can now say amen are we together now when you wake up from a dream and you see me blessing you and praying for you don't just dance that you saw me find a scripture when you connect it to that vision you have given it life to manifest anything not connected to scripture does not have the life that brings manifestation you can have an encounter be in the realm of the spirit watch promotion and you return back and it will never manifest in this realm but when you connect that vision to it is written some of you is a few days after now you will really get all that I've taught you maybe I will just stop at this third encounter so anything I see I pass it through the encounter with the Son does it pass the test I pass it through the encounter with the Holy Ghost does it pass the test then I pass it through the encounter with scripture if it passes the test then I receive it if it fails that test no matter how accurate it is I dump it in peace and I don't feel bad if you tell me apostle your life will be destroyed for instance I salute what you are saying but I go to it is written until I find the same thing you said here there is no reason for tears weep not for the book is opened you only weep when the book is closed hear me there are arrows that fly by day you don't need a prophet to tell you that there are noisome pestilences there are destructions that waste in the noonday so if someone tells you he's not telling you anything new are we together now he's only revealing to you something that the bible already says what today will someone tell you that the bible has not told you generally speaking if someone tells you there is evil on earth in all honesty is that new it is written already told you if someone to tells you there is a possibility for failure is that new no the bible already tells you most of the things we seek for in encounters scripture has already told us i want to succeed okay so how do you succeed if only i can see joshua selman i know my life will change you are right because of the prophetic dimension as written in scripture however you can sit with scripture this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do to do not just to read to do so it may be the doing part you are missing man of god what gives you confidence that you will thrive in ministry i know my mentor I know my father think again I know the spiritual tribe I'm connected to think again hmm. what makes you believe you will prosper I got a first class and then somebody prophesied to me and said I will never fail think again An encounter with the son of the living God you see because we have ignored these encounters many people keep meeting the apostolic and the prophetic ministry but they are never saved do you know that do you know that you can be in church for a long time you can even be part of the eldership and you have not met the son like it's happened to many people I'm not preaching from a standpoint of sarcasm this preaching tonight is coming from a heart that desperately loves the body of Christ and God's people generally speaking these were the things that the Lord taught me that have given me stability in my life today more than my visions listen if I come for miracle service today 
and I never see anything, I never hear anything, I can pick my Bible and read for you a scripture about healing and say the sick begin to be healed based on it is written. Don't tie yourself to just... Vi Listen, visionary experiences and all these supernatural encounters only become useful if they submit to these foundational encounters. If you're a man of God here, learn it and put balance to your administration of encounters. People may clap for you while you are announcing visionary encounters, but sooner or later you'll find out that there is no growth because it is not the encounters create convictions, but their convictions are only strengthened by these foundational encounters. When I learned this, I found rest. I travel for meetings. And people expect to see the power of God. People expect to see the grace of God. And you would ask me, Apostle, what makes you think that people are going to be blessed? I would be stupid to tell you, I hope you know that this is an apostolic call. I hope you know that there are visionary experiences. I will be surprised that I will stand and the heavens will be closed. The basis of my confidence is it is written. What was written? The Lord walking with them. Confirming the words. So every time I walk, I do not walk alone. You invite me, but it's not only me that came. I came with a battalion. So when I came here and I began to speak, and you saw the power of God manifest, it's not just, listen, it's not just because I am anointed. It's not just because I saw. It's not just because something was told my ears. More than those encounters, I know that what I saw submitted to the truth of scripture it is consistent with the character of the son consistent with the ministry of the holy spirit consistent with the character of scripture and i know that god will honor it let me tell you this you walk in this you have received the vaccination for error now god can trust you with visions over nations and you know how to administer the prophetic with accuracy. Why? Because you know how to pass it through. It is written. Apostle Jesus, prophet Jesus. Look at the respect he had for scripture. Every time they asked Jesus a question, he seldom spoke about his encounters. It is written. There are few times you will see Jesus talking about his encounters. Yet he was the fountain of all encounters. It is written. It is written. They say this in your law, but this is what I say. They say this, but this is what I say. His first sermon was not encounters. His first sermon was the spirit of the Lord is upon me because it was written by the prophets. Because he hath anointed me when he was done. He now said this scripture has been fulfilled this day. Let me prove to you that what is written is now manifest. Man with the withered hand, stretch your hands. Now, if you called him a fake man of God, he will refer you to it is written. Let me teach you something before we pray. If you're a man of God here, if you know that God has granted you grace for extraordinary manifestations of the Spirit, don't take for granted that the people who you are ministering to understand what you are saying. Show them the scriptural basis of that operation before you begin it, or at least before the end of that operation. You see me do it most times. Because if you do not see it from a scriptural standpoint, the devil may deceive you into thinking this is just superstition. Are we blessed? I have taught you an encounter with the spirit of wisdom, with favor. My life today is full of convictions. I don't teach things I don't believe. I don't teach things I'm not confident on. But my greatest encounters, brothers and sisters hear me, my greatest encounters are not my encounters of Jesus, as wonderful as they are. My greatest encounters are not the encounters where I saw a crowd, of, a crowd of people. It's not an encounter with all of these saints of old. I only say those things sometimes to encourage you. The foundational encounters in my life that I respect and I honor, that have helped to shape this grace and have produced this that is a wonder and a blessing to the world today, 
is not just that vision it's an encounter with the son of the living God his life that is at work in me an encounter with the office and the person of the Holy Spirit giving me direction helping me and guiding me part time investing the presence of God upon my life then an encounter with the word of God teaching me the character of the Christ and the modus operandi of the kingdom the assignment of the anointing is to make sure the word of God does not look like a lie I've taught you this without the, an encounter with the word of God you don't need anointing you cannot truly operate the anointing in isolation it will mislead people the assignment of the anointing is to validate what was said so if nothing has been said the anointing has no ministry understand this if the lord says let the sick be healed and i declare it as his servant the anointing moves to validate that claim apostle i want to be anointed see how jesus anointed people in the bible he spent time teaching them doctrine he taught them scripture and then one encounter they had now they had the grace to validate these things many of you if i drop a bible here and i drop a bottle of oil you would jump at the bottle of oil even if it breaks on your head you will still be laughing with the injury on your head because you believe you encountered the anointing please return back to the place of scripture sit down with your bible start reading it like you did before I've hardly seen anybody bring me a Bible and say pray on it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Please don't, you, if you have your bottle of oil, say no problem, I'm going to pray on it. But I'm saying we have to be careful. I've not seen anybody buy a clean King James Bible and say, Apostle, please pray on it. That God will open me up to the mysteries of the kingdom. No. But people have brought all kinds of things. People have brought sticks. People have brought uh, uh, water. People have brought handkerchiefs. Um, they are sincere people. I'm not saying they are wrong. People have brought sand. People have brought shoes. People have brought photos. People have brought food. People have brought all kinds of things. Where is the Bible here? It's not necessary. I just need a prophetic action immediately. Apostle, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw myself coming with oil and now I have come with it physically. I agree and I'm going to pray for you. Don't feel bad. I'm not being sarcastic. Okay? So what makes you think that this oil is going to work? Because you will anoint it. No. 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 The oil is not anointed because I lay hands on it. The oil is anointed because I lay hands on it with the understanding that the empowerment comes from scripture so where you keep your anointing oil where you kept your sand where you kept your your candle or whatever just push it and put a bible there don't ignore those things put a bible first most believers would prefer to buy jars of oil jars of handkerchiefs and if you tell them okay what are you going through things are not working in my life listen to this message and then when you listen to this message get this scripture you see them smile at you and live with disappointment as though god punish you i came and i stood here this is what you are doing because god anointed you but the moment you come and you say kneel down turn stand up ah what is this they now begin to say something is going on ah goodness so my my case listen i'm not mocking the prophetic i'm only giving you wisdom there are times that i've prayed for people and i said it's done they didn't believe it they stood there Abba, it's done with what i saw i saw these guys rolling up and down and you just touch me and say you are distracted just focus on me and pray for me with all your heart may god give us growth and maturity in the name of jesus christ We're going to pray. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now listen, two disclaimers. One, you must be wise in communicating what you have heard tonight. 
Don't go around tearing down people. Don't go around insulting prophets and apostles. I have a responsibility to tell you this. Because there are many believers who have not understood what I've said. But they know how to use it and tear other people. They are not going to listen to me. All the while, while I was talking, they were not paying attention. And yet they will go and say, aha, this is what apostle was saying. No, no. I have a responsibility to teach you truth as instructed by God. But if and when I do communicate something that looks like I'm lashing out on people, you must understand that it's, number one is coming from a standpoint of love. And it's coming to a people who should be matured based on scripture. Are we together now? So some of you, maybe you, have, maybe your church or your pastor, you find them operating in the prophetic and they may even make some of these mistakes. Don't point hands at people. You remember that the hallmark of transformation is not just knowledge, it is love. If God grants you the grace and you can explain and expound scripture more perfectly, that's fine. Otherwise, stay in the place of prayer and communicate love. Do not carry revelation like a sword and go and begin to tear people and cause injury in the body of Christ. It is not maturity. I have to put this disclaimer. Are we blessed? Let's pray now. Now that you have learned this, I can release the grace for encounters upon you. And I know that I did not make a mistake because now you know how to decipher encounters. You will be surprised that after this prayer, as I speak over your life, many of you will step into strange dimensions of the prophetic and visionary encounters, but they would not mislead you and they will not mislead others because you have been taught the foundational encounters that every other encounter must rest upon. Please lift your voice in one minute and give God thanks for the word tonight. Father, we bless you and we give you praise. The mystery of supernatural encounters. We bless you, we honor you. 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 In the name of Jesus. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. We bless you for the power of your word, for giving us understanding. We open up ourselves to supernatural encounters, knowing we are safe. We have been pegged by these foundational encounters. They become our boundary of safety and we will never walk in error because we have encounters with the son of the living God. We have encounters with the spirit of the living God. We have encounters with the word of God. The modus operandi of the kingdom. Lift your voice and thank the Lord. No fear, no fear, no fear, no intimidation. Because these three encounters are for all. Hallelujah. By this teaching tonight, find comfort. If you have not yet been open to the realms of visions, visionary encounters do not stand and feel bad don't let some of us that God has helped in that area intimidate you and do not use those visionary encounters as a measure sorry about that a measure of spiritual maturity are we together now no don't sit down and allow yourself to be misled that until I have these supernatural encounters I am not growing if you encounter the Sun you encounter the spirit you encounter the word keep moving you will move enviably to the place of destiny every other encounter that comes is only a supporting structure but i tell you you have gotten it right if you get the sun right you have gotten it you get the spirit right you have gotten it you get the word of god right you have gotten it now let me pray for you father in the name of jesus my first prayer for everyone is that these foundational encounters will become true in our lives in Jesus' name. For anyone here who is born again, you already have an encounter with the Son. But I pray for you that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will become real for you. I also pray for you that the ministry of the word especially because for many of us this is the area we have defaulted we love superstition africa loves superstition 
we love a lot of superstitious things but i pray for you the grace to settle with scripture till you have illumination understanding and confidence receive that grace in jesus name the grace to believe to respect and to exalt what is written above what you see above what you hear receive that grace in jesus name and now i pray for you to support all of these foundational encounters may god open you strangely to the realm of the angelic may god open you strangely to the realm of visions may god open you strangely to the realm of trances and dreams in the name of jesus christ god will reveal things to you through those platforms and then in partnership with these foundational encounters you will produce an excelling christian life in the name of jesus christ hear me for anyone here who has had anything or seen anything in form of vision that negates what is written concerning you i use the authority of scripture and i cancel that vision from your life in the name of jesus christ no matter what you have seen no matter what you have heard if it's not consistent with what is written in the name of jesus in partnership with the spirit of god we declare it null and void and for every vision you have seen every vision you have heard every accurate vision that came from the holy spirit that came from heaven and is yet to be manifest i connect it to what is written i give it the life that makes it manifest in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice who is in error and has become an addict of visions an addict of the prophetic an addict of the apostolic above scripture i declare let there be deliverance for you now anyone who will have to depend on the prophetic or depend on visions for your confidence in the name of jesus i rearrange the basis of your confidence let the basis of your confidence not just be visionary experiences but let it be these tripartite foundational encounters in the name of jesus christ hear me any pronouncement over your life whether through a dream through a vision or even through a man of god that is not consistent with scripture i stand by the ministry of the holy spirit and by that which is written i change it now concerning your life and every door that has refused to open the bible mandates us to prophesy the bible mandates us to declare restoration the bible mandates us to declare that doors be open therefore i stand by the authority of scripture and i decree and declare every closed door opens now every closed door opens now hear me for many of you go back home listen to these scriptures or listen to this sermon find scriptures attached to it 